Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I will be giving you not one but a double viewing of two different places in one video as both was very close by to each other. Firstly, Colchester Castle which is more of an keep was built on a former Roman temple site. For those that know Colchester was the very first Roman city and capital at the time of peak power. The keep was in construction around 1076 on top of the base of the Roman base temple which was suited perfectly well enough to stand highly but the height is very debatable. Over the years the castle has seen many developments that has created a wall surrounding and more accessible entrances that also would become a quite defensible keep with a bailey and ditches covers all the way around. The first Barons War broke out here during 1215-17 of which King John refused to sign the Magna Carta. This was the time of King Henry III reign. This was all down to if not nobody wanted to become the High Sheriff of Essex of the Colchester and the County. In 1607, custody of the castle was granted for life to Charles, Baron Stanhope of Harrington. In 1629, Charles I alienated the reversion of the castle to James Hay, Earl of Carlisle, which passed in 1636 to Archibald Hay. In 1683, an ironmonger, John Wheeler, was licensed to pull it all down, presumably to be a used building material in the town after great devastations in which much of the upper structure was demolished using screws and gunpowder. He gave up when the operation became unprofitable. The castle ceased to exist as royal palace in various roles. This included becoming a county prison for Witchfinder General Matthew Hopkins in 1645. During the Second English Civil War of 1648, Royalist leaders Sir Charles Lucas and Sir George Lewis was executed rear of the castle. Local legend has it that the grass will not grow on the spot on which they fell. A small obelisk now marks the point. In 1656, the Quaker James Parnell was martyred there. The part of the castle under the chapel remained in as used as a goal which was enlarged in 1801. Between 1920 and 1922, the castle and the associated parkland were bought by the borough of Colchester using a large donation from Wheatman Pearson, 1st Viscount Caldrell, a wealthy industrialist who has been the town's member of parliament. The castle was now a graded one listed building. Now moving on to St. Botov Priory which only I can describe thoroughly. A Saxton church dedicated to St. Boltoff originally stood on the site of the Priory, with a tower which resembled the Saxton Tower of Holy Trinity Church in Colchester. The church's conversion to an Augustine Priory began with a Kentish priest called Norman, who had studied under Anselm of Canterbury in France, before returning to England and settling in Colchester. The Priory was to be free from the jurisdiction of any person of which the death of Anne North or any of the successors a new head was to be elected by the majority of the briefing and presented to the Bishop of London for consecration with special powers. In the middle of the 14th century a violent altercation took place between the Priory and St John's Abbey. Early in 1534 the Priory and seven canons Robert Bald Richard Parker, William Sharon, John Gurd, John Gipmans, Robert Rand and William Patch took the oath of fealty under the Act of Succession, those avoiding prosecution under the Treasons Act 1534. As the Priory had been an Augustine house and therefore the church had both parochial and conventual functions, the nave was retained as a parish church. The choir which had been solely for the use of the canyons was not spared however and was demolished along with the Closters, Chapter House and associated buildings. The church remained this way until the siege of Colchester in 1648 during the Second English Civil War. A royalist army had seized the town which was then surrounded and bombarded by the new model army led by Thomas Fairfax 
with St. Bolts being caught in the crossfire of the assault on Southgate, reducing it to the present ruined state. There are more information across the boards and online to get as much more depth of this one's unique priory. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a mega adventure in the future that involves a broad holiday destination. If you liked any of this content, please check out the channel and watch other videos just like this one. Thank you.